A hydrogen vehicle is a vehicle that uses hydrogen as its onboard fuel for motor power. Hydrogen vehicles include hydrogen-fueled space rockets, as well as automobiles and other transportation vehicles. The power plants of such vehicles convert the chemical energy of hydrogen to mechanical energy either by burning hydrogen in an internal combustion engine, or by reacting hydrogen with oxygen in a fuel cell to run electric motors. Widespread use of hydrogen for fueling transportation is a key element of a proposed hydrogen economy. Hydrogen fuel does not occur naturally on Earth and thus is not an energy source, rather it is an energy carrier. As of 2014, 95% of hydrogen is made from methane. It can be produced using renewable sources, but that is an expensive process. Integrated wind to hydrogen plants, using electrolysis of water, are exploring technologies to deliver costs low enough, and quantities great enough, to compete with traditional energy sources. Many companies are working to develop technologies that might efficiently exploit the potential of hydrogen energy for use in motor vehicles. As of November 2013, update, there are demonstration fleets of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles undergoing field testing including the Chevrolet Equinox, fuel cell, Honda FCX Clarity, Hyundai X35 FCEV and Mercedes-Benz B-Class F cell. The drawbacks of hydrogen use are high carbon emissions intensity when produced from natural gas, capital cost burden, low energy content per unit volume, low performance of fuel cell vehicles compared with gasoline vehicles, production and compression of hydrogen, and the large investment in infrastructure that would be required to fuel vehicles. Vehicles Buses, trains, PHB bicycles, canal boats, cargo bikes, golf carts, motorcycles, wheelchairs, ships, airplanes, submarines, and rockets can already run on hydrogen, in various forms. NASA used hydrogen to launch space shuttles into space. A working toy model car runs on solar power, using a regenerative fuel cell to store energy in the form of hydrogen and oxygen gas. It can then convert the fuel back into water to release the solar energy. Since the advent of hydraulic fracturing the key concern for environmentalists with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is consumer and public policy. Confusion that could result adoption of natural gas-powered hydrogen vehicles with heavy hidden emissions to the detriment of environmentally friendly transportation. The current land speed record for a hydrogen-powered vehicle is 286.476 miles per hour set by Ohio State University's Buckeye Bullet 2, which achieved a flying mile speed of 280.007 miles per hour at the Bonneville Salt Flats in August 2008. For production-style vehicles, the current record for a hydrogen-powered vehicle is 207.297 miles per hour set by a prototype Ford Fusion Hydrogen 999 fuel cell race car at Bonneville Salt Flats in Wendover, Utah. In August 2007, it was accompanied by a large compressed oxygen tank to increase power. Automobiles Toyota launched its first production fuel cell vehicle, the Toyota Mirai, in Japan at the end of 2014 and began sales in California, mainly the Los Angeles area, in 2015. The car has a range of 312 miles and takes about 5 minutes to refill its hydrogen tank. The initial sale price in Japan was about 7 million yen. Former European Parliament President Pat Cox estimates that Toyota will initially lose about $100,000 on each Mirai sold. Many automobile companies have been researching the feasibility of commercially producing hydrogen cars and some have introduced demonstration models in limited numbers. Since 1980, car companies have made numerous predictions about the commercialization of FC vehicles. At the 2012 World Hydrogen Energy Conference, Daimler AG, Honda, 
Hyundai and Toyota all confirmed plans to produce hydrogen fuel cell vehicles for sale by 2015. Charles Fries, GM's executive director of global powertrain engineering, stated that the company believes that both fuel cell vehicles and battery electric vehicles are needed for reduction of greenhouse gases and reliance on oil. The use of hydrogen as fuel in an automobile is problematic because of hydrogen's low density. In 2012, Lux Research, Inc., issued a report that stated, the dream of a hydrogen economy is no nearer. It concluded that capital cost, not hydrogen supply, will limit adoption to a mere 5.9 gigawatts by 2030, providing a nearly insurmountable barrier to adoption, except in niche applications. Lux's analysis concluded that by 2030, the PEM stationary market will reach $1 billion, while the vehicle market, including automobiles and forklifts, will reach a total of $2 billion. Buses Fuel cell buses are being trialed by several manufacturers in different locations. The Fuel Cell Bus Club is a global fuel cell bus testing collaboration. Hydrogen was first stored in roof-mounted tanks, although models are now incorporating onboard tanks. Some double-deck models use between-floor tanks. Tata Motors and ISRO have already developed a hydrogen bus which is being tested in India. The bus is expected to get on road in 2015. Trams in March 2015. China South Rail Corporation demonstrated the world's first hydrogen fuel cell-powered tram car at an assembly facility in Qingdao. The chief engineer of the CSR subsidiary CSR Sifanco Limited, Liang Qianying, said that the company is studying how to reduce the running costs of the tram. A total of 83 miles of tracks for the new vehicle have been built in seven Chinese cities. China plans to spend 200 billion yuan over the next five years to increase tram tracks to more than 1,200 miles. Bicycles Pearl Hydrogen Power Sources of Shanghai, China, unveiled a hydrogen bicycle at the 9th China International Exhibition on Gas Technology, Equipment and Applications in 2007. Motorcycles and scooters ENV develops electric motorcycles powered by a hydrogen fuel cell, including the cross-gauge and biplane. Other manufacturers as Vectrix are working on hydrogen scooters. Finally, hydrogen fuel cell electric hybrid scooters are being made such as the Suzuki Bergman fuel cell scooter and the Fibrod. The Bergman received whole vehicle type approval in the EU. The Taiwanese company APFCT conducted a live street test with 80 fuel cell scooters for Taiwan's Bureau of Energy. Quads and tractors also Studer SR. LZ H2 is a hydrogen-powered quad capable of transporting one to three passengers. A concept for a hydrogen-powered tractor has been proposed. Airplanes companies such as Boeing, Long E Aviation, and the German Aerospace Center pursue hydrogen as fuel for manned and unmanned airplanes. In February 2008 Boeing tested a manned flight of a small aircraft powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. Unmanned hydrogen planes have also been tested. For large passenger airplanes however, the Times reported that Boeing said that hydrogen fuel cells were unlikely to power the engines of large passenger jet airplanes but could be used as backup or auxiliary power units on board. In July 2010 Boeing unveiled its hydrogen-powered Phantom IUAV, powered by two Ford internal combustion engines that have been converted to run on hydrogen. In Britain, the reaction engines A2 has been proposed to use the thermodynamic dynamic properties of liquid hydrogen to achieve very high speed, long-distance flight by burning it in a pre-cooled jet engine. Fork trucks A Heiss forklift or Heiss lift truck is a hydrogen-fueled, internal combustion engine-powered industrial forklift truck used for lifting and transporting materials. The first production Heiss forklift truck based on the Lindex 39 diesel was presented at an exposition in Hanover on May 27, 2008.
It used a 2.0-liter, 43-kilowatt diesel internal combustion engine converted to use hydrogen as a fuel with the use of a compressor and direct injection. A fuel cell forklift is a fuel cell-powered industrial forklift truck. In 2013 there were over 4,000 fuel cell forklifts used in material handling in the U.S. Only 500 of these received funding from DOE in 2012. The global market is 1 million forklifts per year. As of 2013, update, fuel cell fleets are being operated by several of companies, including Cisco Foods, FedEx Freight, GNCO, and HEB Grosses. A total of 30 fuel cell forklifts with high lift were demonstrated in Europe and extended it with high lift Europe to 200 units, with other projects in France and Austria. Pike Research stated in 2011 that fuel cell-powered forklifts will be the largest driver of hydrogen fuel demand by 2020. Most companies in Europe and the US do not use petroleum-powered forklifts as these vehicles work indoors where emissions must be controlled and instead use electric forklifts. Fuel cell-powered forklifts can provide benefits over battery-powered forklifts as they can work for a full eight-hour shift on a single tank of hydrogen, and can be refueled in three minutes. Fuel cell-powered forklifts can be used in refrigerated warehouses, as their performance is not degraded by lower temperatures. The FC units are often designed as drop-in replacements. Rockets Many large rockets use liquid hydrogen as fuel, with liquid oxygen as an oxidizer. An advantage of hydrogen rocket fuel is the high effective exhaust velocity compared to kerosene, LOX or UDMH, NTO engines. According to the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, a rocket with higher exhaust velocity needs less propellant mass to achieve a given change of speed. Before combustion, the hydrogen runs through cooling pipes around the exhaust nozzle to protect the nozzle from damage by the hot exhaust gases. Also the energy content or energy density of hydrogen calculated from weight is the best compared to any other chemical energy storage. In combination with an oxidizer such as liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen yields the highest specific impulse, or efficiency in relation to the amount of propellant consumed, of any known rocket propellant. A disadvantage of LH2, LOX engines are the low density and low temperature of liquid hydrogen, which means bigger and insulated and thus heavier fuel tanks are needed. This increases the rocket's structural mass which reduces its delta V significantly. Another disadvantage is the poor storability of LH2, LOX-powered rockets. Due to the constant hydrogen boil-off, the rocket can only be fueled shortly before launch which makes cryogenic engines unsuitable for ICBMs and other rocket applications with the need for short launch preparations. Overall, the delta V of a hydrogen stage is typically not much different from that of a dense fueled stage. However, the weight of a hydrogen stage is much less, which makes it particularly effective for upper stages, since they are carried by the lower stages. For first stages, dense-fueled rockets in studies may show a small advantage, due to the smaller vehicle size and lower air drag. Liquid hydrogen and oxygen were also used in the space shuttle to run the fuel cells that power the electrical systems. The byproduct of the fuel cell is water, which is used for drinking and other applications that require water in space. Internal Combustion Vehicle Hydrogen internal combustion engine cars are different from hydrogen fuel cell cars. The hydrogen internal combustion car is a slightly modified version of the traditional gasoline internal combustion engine car. These hydrogen engines burn fuel in the same manner that gasoline engines do. The main difference is the exhaust product. Gasoline combustion results in carbon dioxide and water vapor, while the only exhaust product of hydrogen combustion is water vapor. 
In 1807 François Isaac de Rivas designed the first hydrogen-fueled internal combustion engine. In 1970 Paul Diages patented a modification to internal combustion engines which allowed a gasoline-powered engine to run on hydrogen the US 3,844,262. Mazda has developed Wankel engines burning hydrogen. The advantage of using ice like Wankel and piston engines is the cost of retooling for production is much lower. Existing technology ice can still be applied for solving those problems where fuel cells are not a viable solution in so far. For example in cold weather applications. Ice forklift trucks have been demonstrated based on converted diesel internal combustion engines with direct injection. Fuel cell Fuel cell cost hydrogen fuel cells are relatively expensive to produce, as their designs require rare substances such as platinum as a catalyst. The U.S. Department of Energy estimated in 2002 that the cost of a fuel cell for an automobile was approximately $275 per kW, which translated into each vehicle costing an estimated $100,000. However, by 2010, Doe estimated the cost had fallen 80% and that automobile fuel cells might be manufactured for $51 per kW, assuming high-volume manufacturing cost savings. The projected cost, assuming a manufacturing volume of 500,000 units year using 2012 technology was estimated by the DOE to be $47 per kW for an 80 kW PEM fuel cell, assuming a manufacturing volume of 10,000 units year. However, the cost was projected to be $84 per kW using 2012 technology. The Department of Energy wrote, Hydrogen fuel cells for cars have never been manufactured at large scale, in part because of the prohibitive price tag but the DOE estimates that the cost of producing fuel cells is falling fast. In 2014, Toyota said it would sell its Toyota Mirai in Japan for less than $70,000 by April 2015 and that it has brought the cost of the fuel cell system down to 5% of the fuel cell prototypes of the last decade. Former European Parliament President Pat Cox estimates that Toyota will initially lose about $100,000 on each Mirai sold. Freezing conditions The problems in early fuel cell designs at low temperatures concerning range and cold start capabilities have been addressed so that they cannot be seen as showstoppers anymore. Users in 2014 said that their fuel cell vehicles perform flawlessly in temperatures below zero, even with the heaters blasting, without significantly reducing range. Service life The service life of fuel cells is comparable to that of other vehicles. PEM service life is 7,300 hours under cycling conditions. 